Even if you're new to Unity, you've probably already used the start function to set up your scripts when they're first enabled and before update is called for the first time. And if you've been using Unity for a little while, you might also be using awake, which is called before start to perform logic when a script is first loaded, or on enable, which is called whenever a class is turned on. These initialization functions are extremely useful for setting a script up, such as getting references to components it needs, or performing one-time logic that needs to happen before anything else. But even if you've been using Unity for a little while, exactly when each initialization function is called might surprise you. In this video, I'm going to show you when awake, on enable, and start are called in Unity, and how it actually affects you. If you're serious about learning how to write your own scripts, then try my online course, How to Code in Unity, where you'll learn the basics of C-sharp scripting, how to solve problems with code, and best practice principles to help you start and finish your game. Let's start with how things usually work. Event messages, so functions like update, fixed update, and late update, are called on every enabled mono behavior in a scene, one by one, in order. This means that all of the updates are called, then all of the late updates, and at the start of the frame, a varying number of fixed update calls are made, depending on the physics step and the duration of the last frame. This is the event message execution order, and it dictates when different types of functions are called during a frame's lifecycle. What's important is that each event message takes place in its own stage, meaning that while one script will have its event messages called before another, all of the same event messages are called before moving on, which means that it's possible to place logic that takes place after all update calls, for example, by putting it in late update. This can be useful for carrying out logic that should come after everything else, such as a camera follow script, which you'd typically want to process after the player has definitely finished moving. But awake and on enable work a little differently. For scene assets, meaning objects that exist and that are active inside the scene when it's loaded, awake and on enable are called in order, just like any other event message. What's different is that they are called as a pair, with awake and then on enable being called on a per script basis. This means that on enable on one script will be called before awake is on another. On enable is called every time the class is enabled, or if it's already enabled when the object it's attached to is activated. While awake will be called on a disabled script, but only if the object it's attached to is turned on. After all of the awake and on enable pairs have been called, start is called next for enabled classes. And then the execution order moves on to repeating event messages like fixed update, input checks, and update. That is, unless the object is created or activated while the game is running. In which case awake, on enable and start will be called immediately outside of this normal order. This is where things can start to get a little complicated, depending on exactly when an object is created or activated for the first time. When a new object is created, scripts on that object will have their initialization functions called immediately. So let's say, for example, that an object is created inside of a different script's update function. So long as the object that's created is active, its script's awake and on enable functions will be called, but start won't be, at least not yet. Start will not be called on the script until the event message in which the object was created has finished. This means that if you create an object in update, Awake and on enable will be called, and then, after all of the updates have finished, start will be called. As a result, the new script may not get an update call at all, at least not on this frame, but it will get late update, which can create an unusual situation in which a script's first late update happens before its first update, which will be called on the next frame as normal. What's more, in this situation, start, which is normally always called before update, will have taken place after the update functions of other scripts. But what does any of this actually mean for you? Why is this important? If you've watched my videos or tried my Unity scripting course, then you'll know that in my opinion, timing, specifically the order in which things happen, can be a huge source of problems in Unity. 
However, in this case, it's useful that a class's initialization functions work in this way, since it means that you can always depend on them taking place in the correct order, even if an object is created while the game is running. However, since it's possible to create a situation in which late update happens before an object's first update, it's important to avoid placing any kind of one-off initialization code in update, if there's a chance that it won't happen. And generally, if you're creating or activating objects during the game, it's safe to assume that update may take place after a late update at least once. What's more, because awake is only called if an object is activated, if your scripts contain particularly heavy setup code, keep in mind that this will only run when the object is first turned on. As a result, if you want objects to run their awake functions at the start of the game, you might want to consider having them active at first and then turning them off until you need them. Now I want to hear from you. How are you using awake and on enable in your game? Are you creating objects while the game is running? And have you run into any timing problems of your own that were caused by Unity's execution order? Let me know by leaving a comment, like this video if you found it useful, and get subscribed for more videos from me. I'll see you next time.